Good evening and welcome to African Voices Platform. My name is Chiwe Chihana. The, the Horn of Africa serves as a strategic connection between the Euro-Mediterranean region, the Middle East, Eastern Africa, and the Indian Ocean. Its crucial strategic position attracts many foreign players who have deeply influenced the local political landscape. Local political actors have not been passive, however. They're not just spectators. They have been crucial to the role played in leveraging foreign involvement to further their own domestic interests. So countries in the region include Kenya, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Somalia, Somaliland, Sudan, South Sudan, and Uganda, and Djibouti as well. And there's been a lot of activity in the last few months within that region. And so today we'll speak more specifically about Djibouti and Somaliland. I'm really pleased to be joined by Adam Yusuf and Ismail Yusuf from Somaliland Matters. Good evening and welcome to African Voices Platform. Good evening too. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining me. So we're just going to go straight into it. Somaliland Matters, you are uh, from Somaliland clearly and you're strategically located on the Red Sea. What has been going on in that region? Adam. Thank you very much for inviting us to the program. Uh, recently in the region, there has been a lot of activities, both political, economic, and geopolitics, as the title says. And clearly, uh, the Horn of Africa consists of uh, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Somalia, Somaliland, Eritrea. So that part of the region is very critical to the rest of Africa because this is where the Red Sea meets the Indian Ocean as the maritime route to most of the world's shipping lanes. And therefore, there's apart from the geopolitics, obviously you have other international actors who are looking at this geographical area very interestingly because their interest also links to where these countries are located in the Horn of Africa, in the Red Sea. Lovely, thank you very much. And Ishmael, so what sort of interest specifically are foreign actors uh, looking at? I know historically that region has harbored some of the US military bases, for example, but what else is going on? Uh, your microphone is muted, please, Ishmael. Thank you very much for, for meeting with us and discussing the very important issues. And if you come to the close to the situation, in, in, as you are aware of it, the uh, Somaliland is, is, was part of Somalia in 30 years ago. And then it went on its own because of the, the way it developed itself because of the civil war happened in the past. Somaliland become independent since 1991. And since then, it has developed a lot in terms of the, as a country, as, as well as uh, and, and the, the relations she has got on the, the part she's meeting with the, with the other countries. So it is very important the way where it is, whether it's the Red Sea and, and, and has got borders with the Gulf, as well as the Red Sea and the, where the ships and everybody goes. So it's a very important area, has got now the, uh, captured a lot of interest from the Gulf region. Uh, Gulf countries like the uh, UAE, which has mm -hmm. built now a massive port in Berbera port, which is now taking place and now finishing it, the port itself and built the international airport, the Berbera airport as well. And that attracts a lot of for, uh, Western uh, countries like, US, uh, like USA. Right, lovely. So speaking to that, um, Somaliland, semi-autonomous as it is, is, is beginning to gain some kind of recognition. I think it's being seen as quite a stable uh, country. Um, previously, I mean, Djibouti came out of a war and it also had some semblance of, of, of a, a safer country, peaceful country, I think, in more recent years. And we've seen the engagement of China. We've seen um, the US definitely had a base there. But very interestingly, we've seen uh, U.S. Congress, congressional delegates coming into Somaliland in the last, in the last, this month actually, in December. Adam, what yeah. were they doing there? And does, does this point to recognition of your country? I think there's many factors uh, that has uh, interested the United States of America to come to Somaliland because of the ge geographical uh, geolocation of, of the Horn of Africa is very important, critical. I think the US 
closest ally in the region was Ethiopia for decades. But because now Ethiopia is going through internal civil war, if you like, the government is fighting the Tigrayan TPLF uh, uh, rebel and, 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 and fighters. Therefore, Ethiopia has become destabilized as a result of internal conflict and internal power struggle. And therefore, the United States has been supporting the TPLF, whereas ABA regime has been supported by Turkey, UAE, and China. So you have external actors also interfering in the Ethiopian politics. And therefore, in the Horn of Africa, the only stable democratic country that is very peaceful in a strategically located country uh, at the port of Berbera is Somaliland. And hence, that's why the United States is quite very interested and want to move very fast and send uh, and senators and delegates from the U.S. on a fact-finding mission. There was almost 10 of them who came to see our president, our opposition parties, and spent almost one week on the ground in Somaliland to do an assessment. And they're going to report back to the United States Congress. And hence, I think come January, February, they want to uh, come in as soon as possible to establish a base at Berbera. Okay, so, so they're looking to establish a military base, or what is it they're looking to establish? I think just to finish the, the, the and, and sentence there, it, they want to obviously establish a base, a military base, and they, they want access to the Red Sea, although they're in Djibouti, both yeah. of them and the Chinese and many other players, including Saudi and a number of other countries in Djibouti. I think Djibouti is becoming overcrowded, very small, tiny country in the Red Sea, of a crime. Mm -hmm. So they are looking at another access to the Red Sea. And the only access now to the Red Sea, which is not in the with the Chinese and the Chinese, and, and, and if you like, th therefore it's Somaliland. And Somaliland is working very closely with Taiwan, which is another close ally to the United States. Mm -hmm. And therefore it makes common sense for United States now to become very interested in Somaliland. And Somaliland also ticks a number of boxes, democratically stable country, and they've managed their own affairs for the last 30 years, very peaceful. And therefore it does tick a lot of the boxes, if you like, of what they are looking for and, and, and the strategic location of the port of Beber. So, so let's go back to, to Djibouti a bit, Adam, whilst I still got you. Um, so Djibouti has always, has for a very long time had a military base for the United States. Um, but what the United States of America did not have is a coastline uh, in Djibouti, uh, on the on the on the Red Sea. So, am I to understand from this discussion that actually the China owns? Does it own a coastline on the Red Sea in Djibouti, or is it rented? What is the situation there? I think they rent the the, the space at the basis, and and they pay the government the government of Djibouti x amount of millions of dollars uh, every year. I think they it, it, it's not owning it. What both of them are, are leasing, if you like from the government of Djibouti. But it, the US has been there more than 50 years, but I think they had a clear objective just to have a military base, that's all. Whereas the mm -hmm. Chinese has moved in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. they were also given a military base, but they also have become soft power. So you have software and military power. By software, I mean, they've managed to put a lot of capital infrastructure projects. They built the free mm -hmm. zone, they built a railway from Djibouti, which is carrying all the goods and, 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 and goods and services to Ethiopia, a brand new train, cargo train. So they were able to put a lot of infrastructure projects and financially, so they were able to support them financially and build them. So that was the difference with the United States. So they have also put, give a lot of loans to the government of Djibouti and therefore now Djibouti is indebted to the China, whereas the US only have the military base. They haven't put a lot of capital infrastructure projects and therefore, now, in other words, uh, the Chinese have, if you like, outsmart the US or were able to put a lot of resources. And therefore, Djibouti is in the hands of Chinese more so than the United States. And therefore, United States just one morning wakes up and realizes they're losing battle in Djibouti. And therefore, they're looking for another access to the Red Sea. And that's why they're talking to Somaliland. Okay. And Ishma, what's happening in Somaliland? What's been the response of the citizens of Somaliland uh, with this visit? Uh, what are people thinking? What are politicians saying? Opposition leaders? What's going on? Yes. Uh, Somaliland, as I said before, it is very stable, democratic, had a number of uh, elections 
and local electionists as well as parliamentary electionists, mm -hmm. lots of presidential electionists. Next mm -hmm. presidential election is coming next year. And this one man, one vote is the area, is that area which is the one man, one for the existence. And it's all, you know, there has no, uh, have no debt for, for IMF or international countries. It's, it's all relying themselves. And now all the politicians and all the people the, uh, of the government, whether it's the parliamentarian or anybody are, are rallying behind the government saying that we need to develop, we need to get the recognition, we need to develop and, 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 and establish what's existing at the moment. For example, what's happening in Barbara is do we, uh, do we, have, we have rented to UAE to build uh, the biggest port in that region, in that area. Yeah. Now they have built there, and now they are they're building the airport as well. So Americans, when they come came there, they also look into the the, the, the structures and the and the what's there in the, on the country because it's a very peace country has got a lot of resources, mineral, agricultural, you name it. You know everything is 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 virgin kind of things in Somaliland. So they are looking not only for and uh, military advantages but also for economic and, and advantage to, to the country. Okay, so so when you talk about uh, the economic situation in Somaliland, you're talking about I me, mean, you've, you've just given me a, a snapshot of, of what's good about Somaliland. But I think currently we're talking about Somaliland, more than half the population in Somaliland lives below the poverty line. Do you do you uh, do you anticipate that this is, is this is something that will benefit more of the people there or? Um, or are we going to see another Yemen situation? Because I think strategically, Yemen, uh, you talked about the United Arab Emirates. I mean, the, the, the United Arab Emirates had interests in Yemen. That region, the, the, that country at the moment is, is, is in a terrible condition. Um, do, do you actually have hope that this will benefit people? Yes, absolutely. You are. It's, it's completely different from the Yemen and Somaliland. Somaliland, the way they came in is to mm -hmm. develop the paper port. And that was the economical thing. It's not about, for example, the military side. They came for the, to develop the better port so that it becomes an international port where the Ethiopians or any other Ethiopians has got the biggest, biggest population in the East Africa or mm -hmm. Horn of Africa. So they get it, the, the population is they have. They get the, they don't have a port in, in, in Ethiopians. So the port they have got using a better port and the better corridor so that the uh, the UAE built that port, and it, by building that port, it makes that very interesting in terms of the other countries and in, in the Western countries that what's happening here. So yes, there's a, we are in the poverty line, but also we are defending ourselves. The Somaliland defending themselves in terms of developing itself, but now mm -hmm. because of the mineral things, it's coming up, and the, also the, the agricultural, the livestock, and and the sea. It's all coming up and they need is, for example, uh, the land is virgin in a way. So it's a virgin and it's nearest economic, some people and uh, businessmen from the UAE, from the United, uh, from the USA to come and, and invest it. So we are not looking, for example, another colony kind of things. We are looking investors and we are looking, for example, and, and, and look, to get the recognition of the country we are looking for for the last for the 30 years. Okay, so I absolutely hear that about recognition. I think we, we have had this conversation quite a lot about recognition, recognition, recognition. Um, and I think Somaliland probably has reached that place where it's it's playing in the in, in the international in, in the international arena. Um, Adam, what what uh we, there's there's more to this situation, I think, when it comes to to that to that general area. Um, looking at the situation in Tigray in Ethiopia, for example, um, th th there's a hand of the United States of America in there. Um, what happened to looking for African solutions to African problems? Why is Somaliland reaching out to the West? You are muted, Adam. <clears throat> Let's talk about the Tigray. And a phenomena. I think the Tigray phenomena, the US ally in the Horn of Africa has always been Ethiopia for a very long time. And Ethiopia is 110 million population, a huge country uh, yes. uh, working under federal system. And that federal system uh, has ethnic dimensions and tribal dimensions. And that balance can only go for so long. When the, the balance is tipped over, Tigrayan only makes six percent of the wider population, and they were in controlling that country for more than thirty to forty years. And therefore, during the period that they were uh, running uh, Zenawi time, 
I think a lot of the generals, the resources was going to Tigranians and therefore the others felt left out. So there was always a vacuum and pressure. It was just a matter of time that pressure will explode uh, the balance of power. So that is what was at stake within Ethiopia. And then you have external actors who have invested, the Chinese, the UAE have invested heavily. And therefore that took a different dynamics and the US has been supporting Tigrayans. And therefore you have external actors who have vested interest trying to solve local problems to gain, to, to acquire local solution becomes difficult. And I think that phenomena is the same that is playing out in Somalia, right. where the current president and the prime minister also are fighting for the power. And then you also have a local dimensions, local issues, local tribal problems, all fighting uh, uh, the uh, individual leader to be the, the president. And then you have outside actors. So mm -hmm. you have a lot of interference in the Horn of Africa from uh, big powers, if you like the US, the Chinese, the Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, uh, all interfering in the local politics because they understand strategically whoever controls the Red Sea and the Horn of Africa will have a lot of uh, leverage in the rest mm -hmm. of Africa. So you have local dimensions within Horn of Africa, geopolitics, which also affects the wider Africa uh, politic, if you like, because China has invested in many African countries. In recently, mm -hmm. Uganda, the only airport, they gave them 220 million Chinese and they couldn't pay those loans back. China now is taking over the only uh, Ugandan airport, which is an Entebbe airport. So that shows the phenomena of big powers playing out in Africa. Yeah, um, I think just to correct that 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 line, um, China has actually said that that option is not off the table. But I think the media we caught we caught wind of we caught wind of that story and we've assumed that that's what they've done. But I think that China has actually said uh, that option is not on the table. It's not off the table, but it hasn't done that yet. Um, can I can I hope, take you back to Ethiopia just 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 so uh, our audiences can understand a bit more about what's happening there because. The, Ethiopia has been in the news beyond just the Tigray situation. Uh, I believe the prime minister was fired just yesterday or the day before yesterday within the last few days by the president in Ethiopia. What is going on? We've Somalia. had Senator... I mean, oh, I beg your pardon. I'm talking Somalia. about Somalia. I'm talking about Somalia. I'm talking about Somalia. Thank you very much. Yeah. So what is it that is going on? Because we saw... Uh, Ilhan Omar in the United States also has jumped onto this conversation. Quite a lot of people are coming into this. What is going on there in Somalia and how does it affect the rest of the region? Is that Director Ismail? Oh. Um, Any one of you can take that, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you very much, I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think the issue there is because the, the president gave all the powers initially to the prime minister and to, to, to manage the whole system of the, of the elections within, within, within Somalia. And then he started interfering it again with the, with the system because uh, and then the, the, there, are, there are so many groups which within, within the, uh, without interest within the political of Somalia. And, and the president of Somalia then interfered again to the, to the prime minister, what he has, the, the power he has given to him. Because the president he could not control anymore uh, the prime minister he he appointed, so the issue now started again. And now the the situation is very worse in the worst case scenario, and they are probably uh, people are worried about the civil war may start again. Hopefully, it will not start, and everybody's praying for that because it is it is people who are dying, uh, yeah. so no want anybody to die there. So and as from as from Somaliland and. We we want the Somalia to be to be you know a uh, safe area you know not not to be fighting each other you should be you should be having an election like in I also use the examples of Somaliland Somaliland had numerous elections free and fair elections last one in held um, the last uh, in, in beginning of this year and was the parliamentary and, and 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 local elections and all where everybody was satisfied for the outcome of those yeah. elections so we are saying to Somalia. Just to use what is learned from Somaliland, what they are doing, and stop fighting each other and listen to each other. And that's what the advice we are giving to them, to our brothers in Somalia. Right. 
Thank you. Uh, thanks for giving context to that. Um, so coming back to the subject of uh, international recognition, uh, UN recognition as well, Adam, you, um, so we still think of Somaliland as semi-autonomous and mostly because of Somalia. But with, with, with this current trajectory with the US involvement, what do you think the next steps are going to look like? What the next steps are, uh, currently Somaliland is focused on economic development. And economic development is a, the driver factor of a stable country and destination for investment friendly because companies and corporate companies companies would be and, and make profit, create jobs and pay taxes. And therefore, Somalia has created that space. And therefore, now the DP world has uh, invested 450 million, as Ismail highlighted. And that project has almost come to an end. And the road, the, the corridor, Berbera to Ethiopia corridor, the tarmac, the road is, is completed. And therefore, uh, now they are going to complete the free zone. And it, from the information that I have, 95 companies from Jebel Ali, from DP World, who work with very close to DP World, based in Jebel Ali in Dubai, are all going to open offices in Berbera free zone. So they're all good. The 95 companies are going to open their branch. So by creating... So uh, that's, that, that's an economic free zone. What yes, yeah. free zone being an economic one? Okay. Yes, it's an economic okay. free zone. So that creates a climate of international companies coming to invest in Somaliland. And then you have the dynamics of the Taiwan. Taiwan, uh, the, uh, and they are very close yeah. allies to Somaliland. The only second country after uh, is Tawini. And they have uh, a representative in Hargeisa and equally Somaliland have a representative in Taipei, the capital city of Taiwan. And recently they have been working with a number of projects, mm -hmm. water projects, agriculture projects, and a number of projects, including the oil company Janelle, which they're going to invest and work in collaborative with Janelle, with Somaliland government, a three way Somaliland government, Taiwan and Janelle, which is the oil company that has been exploring Somaliland. And so come 2023, they will start the first exploration in two areas of Somaliland. Okay. So, so, uh -huh. so when it comes to the, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to so ask all, you about all, the oil. All I wanted yeah. to conclude is that the US is coming at the backdrop of all these economic developments. So right. for them to, to come to acquire the base, so it ticks all the boxes, a stable country where they can do business with, a country that mm -hmm. and, and has credibility, track record of uh, self-sustainable for 30 years. And as Ismail said, we have no IMF loan, no other loan with any Western or Chinese loans. We are the only free, uh, and, and a country which has no loan. Most of African countries, as you know, have been given loans and therefore they're indebted into, yeah. to the countries. And therefore that helps with the credentials of Somaliland. And therefore the US having now approached Somaliland, I think it ticks the boxes. Now they, they are talking about supporting Somaliland to be recognized as self-sovereign independent country. But, but maybe on the, on the IMF loans, uh, is that not because uh, with, with Somaliland not being tied to part of the United Nations, they can't access Bretton Woods uh, institutions' money? Absolutely. Is that not the reason? I think that is one of the main reasons, but it has worked, if you like, and, and on the contrary, it has worked for the advantage of the Somaliland because Somaliland are able to collect taxes mm -hmm. and pay their civil servants, the police, the military, the civil servants, and the different ministries from the revenue they collected from the taxes. And therefore, so it, it meant by depriving Somaliland of IMF and international banking system, it has helped us to be more independent and manage the little that we have within. So that gives us a, a very good case study, which maybe other Africans need to learn from. So if we were recognized, mm -hmm. of course, those IMF loans will be available to us. But mm -hmm. we, the fact we've survived for 30 years within our means, mm -hmm. we can learn some lessons from there to make sure that we just don't borrow willy nilly so that we just borrow within the means that we need to borrow. <laughs> right. um, Ishmael, I, I was wondering whether you could you could shed some light on this. Um, the, the the U.S. delegation that came to Somaliland, um, we, we, we it's quite clear that they they met up with civil societies, education, health, and conservation institutions, um, and apart from visiting Berbera Port. 
the they also visited the airport but then almost every media house or anyone reporting from somaliland has stated that there are amongst other strategic lo locations that have not been disclosed why is that and do you have any idea of where these other locations are and what the purpose of that visit would be have, would have been yeah it's uh, it's in fact a, a high delegation and a, a good number and the there are there are always you know when they come there was always some uh, privacy within 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 the framework of their coming in so everything will not be shared with this with the, with the media but they have been they have met you know all the um, stakeholders of, of Somaliland they have met all the um, house of um, elders house mm -hmm. of parliament the parliament they have met the and um, all the political parties and all the you know and and all the stakeholders you name it you know and so civil society everyone they have met it and they have all the visited in different number of places where the places are not clearly shared with the with the mainly with the social media because of the because the interest that they have shown and also it's it is it is still early stages to say yes they are doing and developing this part of the country because if we say now uh, promote something which not been at the end later on come up then we're going to say say exactly so what they are doing is it's just if doing doing collection collecting all this information is taking back and then analyzing it what they can do and how what area do they they need to develop and what projects they need to take forward so that's the, that's what's happening at the moment okay so that still doesn't answer the secrecy does it adam <laughs> yeah yeah i think if i just add the reason of meeting all the others was just to fact finding mission to make sure they're not only speaking to the government they're able to speak to the opposition and listen mm -hmm. to their side of the story listen to mm -hmm. the civil society and 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 they they when they were traveling they had no bodyguards unlike somalia where uh, our brothers in somalia where they have to have an armored book. so they saw for themselves firsthand how peaceful it was even as a western and a citizen just walking in the capital city of Argas. so they've been to borame berbera a number of other cities and they were given a free hand to whoever they wanted to meet they had their own list of people that they wanted to meet. So they were given a full access so that, because Somaliland obviously is craving to be recognized. So they have nothing to hide, if anything, to, to make, you know, a very open so that they can make their own assessment based on what they've read or seen. And prior for them coming to Somaliland, our foreign minister, Dr. Issa Kaid and Dr. Edna Aden both visited the United States and met them, the Congress and a number of very high level and, and people in the United States. Okay, and were they invited or was this with them seeking uh, audience with the US? They were invited to an international conference for when democratic countries. More than 100 countries were invited in the United States. Somalia was the only country invited in the region for democracy. Have I lost democracy. you? All right, okay. Yes. Um, I do apologize. I believe my internet is slightly unstable, so I'll continue though. Um, do, uh, I was wondering what you both thought. I mean, uh, the United Arab Emirates has been trying its level best as an ally of the United States, actually, in fact, has tried its level best to uh, to become heavily involved in the areas, literally, to sort of to be the power in, 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 the, in the area around the Red Sea. And... Um, uh, with 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 the, with things changing, the extractive industry, such as uh, mining for minerals, mining for oil, uh, is it, 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 that, that's becoming less popular economically. But you're talking about Somaliland as being one of those that's actually looking at exploration of oil um, at a time when things are beginning to change. Do you see any uh, future in that? Is that actually going to happen? Is that a progressive thing for Somaliland to be doing? Because even even Arab Emirates itself is looking at other partnerships so they can stop depending on oil extraction. I think the oil is just one sector of the economy. They are looking at agriculture, mining, fishery. We've got a very large cost of tuna fish and, and a lot of other fish, and very safe from piracy. So there's a lot of other uh, potential uh, solar renewable energy. So there's a lot of other uh, sectors that Somaliland needs to diversify. Oil is just one sector, and, and you're absolutely right. Going future, gen and in the long term, I think oil is not gonna be sustainable. You're talking about electric cars coming into, into the market. 
and mm-hmm. therefore I think it's just one of the sectors. And I think the United the United Arab Emirates, because they are a very rich country, one of the GCC countries, I think they have a lot of purchasing and 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 power in terms of working with and in partnership with other sectors to try and revive that, and obviously in partnership with Somaliland. Totally, thanks. And um, is- did you want to say something, Ishmael? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, just, just to add that because of this, they are building now the free zone. It's free zone mm-hmm. again to UAE, and they are part of you know coming from Jabal Ali, which is the in in Dubai, like moving to most of the things to to Barbera, which is they are building now the biggest uh, and free zone in in the region. Okay, that's useful. Um, Ishmael, I'm going to ask this of you as well. Uh, what happened to African solutions to African problems? Where, why are we not? What, so, so this is more of a of an African wide uh, situation. Why have we not been able to salvage what the Horn of Africa has got as Africans, for example, and with African solutions? Can you say it again? Can you say it? Yeah, I'm saying what what is what 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 struggles do we have as Africans to do for ourselves what we should be doing? We always wait on external people to come in and and, and solve our problems. I think that the situation in the Horn of Africa should really be um, the situation, be it this you know uh, the, the the acquisition of of land on the Red Sea, whether it's the war in Tigray, um, the tensions in Somalia. Why? is there always an external interference or external arm that's doing or helping and not we Africans giving ourselves solutions? What is the problem? I think, I think it's because of the interest they have got because we have got so many external interests within, within the region that interfering and I've got them more power than, than East African countries. For example, mm-hmm. if you go, for example, USA or, or China or anybody, you know, they, have, they are powerful countries and, and they, they have got more interest than us. So yeah. they, what they do is they use just do use uh, kind of still the po- political size of divide and rule is there within within these within our countries. So in African countries, mm-hmm. unless they look what's good for them and develop themselves in a way that that to to, to say that come on Western, we know what we are doing, we are good at it, we can rely on ourselves. Unless mm-hmm. that comes to the table, it will be still the Chinese coming in saying that oh we can do something for you. The Americans come and go, oh, we can do better than better deal for you. Or the or the European will come and say, oh, hang on, guys, we have got a lot and uh, better policy and we are introducing you our way of life. So unless the Africans say, hang on, guys, we rely on ourselves, we defend ourselves, we develop ourselves, because the thing is, it's the lack of resources, the lack of things. But unless we go back to our roots and say what we are doing wrong and learn from from the from the from the past. Then we cannot develop, and we always rely on the on the West. But that needs to come from from the elite level to say that, mm-hmm. hang on, guys, we want to be independent from now on, and we don't want to be rely on Americans or Chinese or Western or Europe or anything like that. We just get level with our with our work. I think if I just yeah. add, yeah, go it, ahead. It, it is a very important question, very valid, very important, and I wish we had a silver bullet answer for this. Uh, because because after 50 years, we are still unable, African Union and leaders have been meeting for the more than 50 mm-hmm. years in Addis Ababa, and they cannot solve South Sudan problem. They cannot f- uh, solve a lot of African problems. It's very shameful to our leaders and our and, and uh, our and African continent not to solve our own problem and rely on the outsiders too. And I think that is exactly and relating to your question. And we don't have answers to it. And all yeah. we can say is, is, is and the African leaders have them uh, become very selfish and greedy themselves. And in their own countries, unless they're honest with their own country, you cannot be honest with trying to solve other people. In, in, in other words, if you cannot solve problem in your own household, you cannot solve your neighbor's problem. First, you have to solve the problem in your household. In other words, that's the analogy I'm using. Every African country have their own baggage, their own issues politically. They are not yeah. democratically elected. They are suffering the resources of the population. Some of them have been power for 30 years. And then how can they solve other African problems? Example, Uganda. Yoweri Musabin has been in power for more than 40 years. And every opposition, every election, he is winning with 99.9%. How can that be? And then how can he solve Somalia's problem 
Whereas you got the problem it itself cannot be solved. So that's the dynamics. Unless those African leaders are true and honest to themselves and solve their own country's problem, and then they can start solving the neighbor's problem and then the African regional problems. And I think it comes down to that dynamics. Unless mm -hmm. they are honest to themselves, they cannot solve other people's. And then that's hence when the Western world and the Chinese identify gap in those and, and uh, in the absence of African uh, solving and problems and then they come in with their other interests and then divide and rule and take our resources mm -hmm. right and that's, the, I, and that's the reality and that's the reality and, the right right thanks 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 so much for weighing in on that because i'm thinking strategically with djibouti uh somalia somaliland you know with the red sea that's a very strategic position mm. that's a very something that we should have been owning ourselves and and, and 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 especially the countries there that that should have been benefiting it's 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 i mean you're looking at the, the the europe coming through the access to the indian ocean there's all that that we could harness ourselves but we are losing it um just one one last thing again related to that is is there a solution to the current somalia problem i mean the tensions are rising what is the immediate solution? Is that uh, Somalia or Somalia, not Somaliland, no Somalia? Yeah. yeah. I think I think I think they are they were um, they were doing some sort of election, not uh, one by one for the election, but um, a kind of selection, kind of elect with, with kind of election. Mm -hmm. We say that they would have they would choose some people, would choose who is who would be the president, a group of people. I, I think. And uh, elderly people will choose one person to, to, to both of the parliament. And then the way they are doing it is not, it, it will take time. It will take time because every part of Somalia is still there is a civil spanning. And unless unless they put them together themselves and, and, and come with a proper dialogue between themselves and solve the issues between themselves, and it will be very difficult for them to, to, to become a, a, a country it was before. So... I think Somalia needs a lot of a lot of needs to be done within Somalia, and as the answer should come from themselves, not from the West, not from the, any other country. It's got to come from themselves, deciding what's good for their country. Finally, I think they've gone on the brink of almost war, but I think at the end, people are tired of war for 30, 40 years, and I yeah. think the the tribal leaders and the different and, and political local uh, people will galvanize. Yeah. and come to a local solution. And I think people are fed up with the war. And I think the temperature mm. will cool down. And I yeah. and we and we hope and wish that things come down. And I think they have an, an, a free and fair election. I really do hope um, uh, in the same way alongside you, because I always get worried when the West starts chipping in, they start talking in a situation. And the last two days, I think we've had a lot of noise coming in from America. So I'm a bit concerned about that uh, with on the Somalia situation. And Adam, um, earlier today, you and I were, were having a bit of a, a chat and we talked about how the African Union building that was built by the Chinese was bugged. Um, so similar things are happening in, in Djibouti. You were raising a concern. Uh, seeing, seeing as we're talking more Djibouti and Somaliland. Could you just run me through that again, please? Yes, I think I read in the report that I've sent you, the Heritage Foundation report, if you read it, which is about 13, 14 page. Yeah. And if we look at the uh, scenario where the African Union building was built by Chinese, brand new, and handed them the keys, and later yeah. they found it was bad. It was very shameful. And I think the only president at the time, Paul Kagame of Rwanda, was objecting to that, saying, we are 54 African countries. Why don't we raise money and just build one building for ourselves? So if yeah. you if you let yourself to be given a free building, obviously there is an interest. The, the English saying there's no free lunch. In the in the case of Djibouti, we had the, the they just built them a brand new foreign ministry building. So that begs the question of similar analogy of what happened in Addis Ababa. So you're raising a concern, like should we really be allowing this to be happening again? <laughs> of course, if I if if I was the leader of a country and I was uh, a big building was given to me by Chinese. I'll be worried, put it this way. Right, so just before we go, I'm going to just put it on the table that I'm so aware you've got countries such as Turkey, China, United States of America, United Arab Emirates playing in, in your region. And uh, I really do hope that we, we it's an even playing field and that Somaliland, um, Somalia, Djibouti, Ethiopia are not going to be losing out, but will actually be benefiting from this. 
Absolutely. I think Somaliland model could be uh, show a good example of uh, how to work with civil society, respecting the rule of law, democracy, and at the same time, improving the lives of the local population. And I think that's the fundamental issue. It's not just to be a leader of a country and not and care about your own citizens. The reasons why the countries like United Arab Emirates are very progressive is they look after their citizens. And equally, we expect Somaliland to play that role and show a good example to the rest of Africa that it can happen from grassroots approach and, you know, and, and, and being a patriot to your own country and make sure you improve the lives of the common people. Thanks, Adam. Ishmael, any last words? No, thanks very much. I agree with all with Adam said, and thank you for hosting us. Now, thank you so much for joining me. This was a special edition of uh, the Horn of Africa Geopolitical. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.